Welcome cooks to my series where I give a weekly cooking tip every single Saturday. My goal is to get you motivated for a weekend of cooking, tasting, and delicious fun. So last week we talked about the difference between saute pans and skillets. This week we're going to talk about materials. So join me for my weekly cooking tip. So last Saturday we talked about the difference between a saute pan and a skillet. This week we're going to talk about materials. And there's a lot of opinion about what is the best material for cookware. And I really don't want to get into that kind of argument. This is more of a discussion about the pros and cons of different kinds of types of material. Because if you, you guys are familiar with, um, with me, you know that I love everything, right? I love all kitchen equipment. So what's great about um, the state of the kitchenware industry is we have so many things to choose from and it is so much fun as a cook, right? So there's no right or wrong answer about what type of material that you buy or you prefer to cook in. Cooking is personal. You are the master of your kitchen. You are the master of your dish and you are the master of your equipment, right? That means you get to choose what you use in your kitchen. For me, I'm a gadget freak. I'm a cookware freak. I like to look at all these and I like to see what's good, what's bad, what do I like, how can I use it? That is fun for me. So for me, it's not a contest of what is better to use. It's more of how does this work and how can I use it in my cooking, right? So everybody will have an opinion. So if you ask somebody, what type of cookware should I use? Always remember that it's filtered through one, their experience of what they've used and number two, their own personal bias or opinion over one thing or another. And I don't even know if that opinion is based on any kind of experience using the different materials. So what we're going to talk about today is just, what I believe is what's great about these materials and also what I believe are, if you could say issues with these materials or limitations of these materials or consideration about how these materials perform, how they react, how they heat, how they cool, because I believe they're all great for something, but you need to use them for the right kind of job. So that's why my opinion is you should get skillets in all these kinds of materials because you will use them for different applications. I don't personally believe that there's one of these that is perfectly great for everything because every single one has its limitations. And when we talk about that, you're going to be like, oh yeah, right? Like I have a friend who swears by nonstick and all they ever buy is nonstick. And they look at me like I'm crazy if I want to buy something else. And my thoughts of that are nonsticks are great. Nonsticks are fantastic. And there are times where I use a nonstick primarily to cook a certain kind of food. But there are other foods that I don't want to use this. I want to use a stainless steel skillet. This is a raw stainless steel skillet. It is, this is an all clad, this is a French skillet. It is raw stainless steel and it's great. I love it. 
But there are also times where I want to use this. This is a cast iron skillet. And cast iron skillets have some, like this cult following sort of, because there's people that are so into cast iron skillets and I see why. They're great, right? Um, for some people, a cast iron skillet is the end all. They can cook everything in it, but there's some things that you can't cook in it, or it's better to cook in something else. So let's talk about those things. Okay, on to the materials. First and foremost, nonstick. Nonstick coating can be sprayed on pretty much anything because it's basically paint, right? So you've taken issues that people have had with other kind of materials. They stick, they're reactive, they're maintenance issues, they're all that stuff, and there is a demand for cookware that doesn't stick and is non, non-stick, right? So that's what this is created for. So, I mean, a lot of people are, are a little strange about non-stick cookware because I don't know, I don't know if they think that somehow the material that this is made out of in and of itself is non-stick um, because it's not. This is painted or sprayed with a material that allows for the non-stick capabilities, right? So, if you take anything, any kind of material, and you paint it, or you spray it, you coat it with silicone, you coat it with Teflon, there's always going to be issues that this material comes off. That is the fact, that is reality about nonstick cookware. This cookware is, to some degree, disposable because of that fact. Now, it's not like, you know, an aluminum pan, where you, like those foil pans where you use it once and you throw it away. You can use these nonstick pans for five, ten years maybe. This one is getting a little beat up. This is a daily driver. We use these suckers every day and I throw these bad boys in the dishwasher. They will last longer if you care for them. If you beat them up, if you use metal utensils, if you throw them in the dishwasher, you do all that stuff, the life of it is going to be lower. No matter what the manufacturer tells you, this supposedly is dishwasher safe and metal utensil safe. And I use metal, metal utensils in it and I put it in the dishwasher. And the life of it is lessened as a result, right? But I know this is a nonstick pan. I'm going to have to replace it. It's a fact that nonstick coating, no matter what you coat it with, eventually that coating is going to come off. The question is how long will it last and what do you have to do to maintain it or keep it nice? So because this is uh, coated, and I'm in a weird mood, right? <laughs> because this is coated, there's some issues with it. There's potentially health issues if it comes off in your food. There's potentially issues with Teflon. We all know if you heat it too high, it gives off fumes that could be unhealthy. Um, there's issues with any kind of coating that you put on cookware. So, what do I use a nonstick skillet for? To be honest with you, when I first started cooking, I used to use nonstick for everything. And the more I learn, and the more sophisticated my cooking has gotten, I use nonstick non skillets less and less. What I use them for is mainly things that are delicate. I use it for cooking eggs. You can use it for cooking fish. You can use it for delicate foods that you don't want it to stick. Because if an egg sticks in this, you're gonna be scrubbing this bad boy and your egg is gonna be ruined. You can get this clean, you just use Barkeeper's Friend and it comes out perfectly clean, showroom condition. But your fish and your eggs are beat, right? Your potatoes. Your potatoes, try, try cooking fried potatoes in this. 
just try it if once. That's all you need to do, and you ain't going to do it again. Fried potatoes. Anything that's really going to stick on there, that's what I use it for. And my use of this is limited. More and more, the more I learn to cook. So this, underneath the coating, this is either going to be aluminum or it's going to be stainless. Stainless itself has a pretty bad heat conductor. It's uneven. It doesn't spread the heat around the pan. It's not great. So they tend to use aluminum and they can spray directly on aluminum. They can hard anodize aluminum, which that is this is. They dump it into electric chemical bath and it hardens it and you, you eliminate the um, reactivity of the aluminum and then they spray it with the nonstick. This is aluminum sandwiched between stainless steel. Aluminum is very reactive. You put a tom tomato sauce in aluminum and it's going to turn it all gray and it's going to taste like metal. And stainless steel doesn't do that. So you take aluminum and you sandwich it between stainless steel. So this is raw stainless steel and this pan is fantastic. And a lot of people ask me, how can you use that? Every time I use stainless steel, everything sticks and you get this like blue color, it discolors it. Well, you can clean this with Barkeeper's Friend, but some foods you want that sticking. That sticking is a positive thing. That is because when you cook in this kind of pan, you put a piece of chicken in there and when you're done cooking off the chicken, you lift it up and you have these bits that are on the bottom of the pan. And you throw a little butter on those bits and a little bit of liquid, chicken broth, wine, or whatever, and you get those bits up and they go into the sauce and it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. You don't start this pan cold. You heat it up, you put oil in it, you put some kind of fat in it, and you cook it. You put the materials in there when it's hot. So you cook, saute some vegetables. The more you learn to use a plain stainless steel pan, the more you will love it. And the less that you will use this for non-delicate foods. So the benefit of this is it's dishwasher safe. It does an amazing job conducting heat. You can develop fond and make a fantastic pan sauce. I use this primarily. That is a personal opinion. I think Eric uses this primarily, don't you? You mainly use um, um, stainless. So then we move into cast iron. And this is going to share some of the same properties of the cast iron as you're about to talk about. Yeah, the cast iron shares a lot of the properties that this does, but we'll talk about the cast iron. And when you would use one versus the other. So this is a cast iron skillet. This one is made by Lodge. This comes in raw cast iron and it come, you can get it enameled. And there's different, Lodge has an enamel line, Le Creuset has an enamel line. The reason they enamel it is because it has some of those properties that um, they were trying to avoid with, with this by making the nonstick. Raw cast iron has a huge following. It's fantastic for a lot of things. Some people use it as their primary pan. But one reason I don't use it for my primary pan is because sometimes I cook and I want different properties in my cookware. So I want to use something different. So what's great about the cast iron? The cast iron lasts forever. You can rust the sucker out and then uh, scrub off the rust, season it, throw it in your oven for a couple hours and bring this back to absolutely beautiful. This will outlast me, you, your grandparents or whatever. This is like one of those pans that you buy for a lifetime, right? Um, it takes a lot of heat. So when you heat the sucker up, 
it takes the heat and it holds the heat, right? So that's why it's so great. If you want to make um, some fried chicken, right? Put some oil in here, heat it up. It's going to hold that heat. You put your fried chicken in there. A lot of people, when they make fried chicken, they say they have trouble. As soon as they put the chicken in, the temperature goes down and now it's not frying. You will get the best results with a cast iron pan because even though you put cold chicken in there, it holds the heat better than a thin or any kind of stainless. So it won't drop in temperature as fast as it will in a stainless steel pan. It holds your heat, right? You can also get it ripping hot so you can sear a steak. This thing can go up to pretty much as high as you want it because they, they fire it at thousands of degrees to melt the uh, iron. So this thing can go in your oven on broil on a barbecue, straight on the fire. We put these things straight on the campfire and they're great for that. Sometimes, however, when you're cooking something, you want a pan that is more reactive to heat than a cast iron pan can do. When you heat a cast iron pan, it's slow to come up to heat, but it, when it gets that heat, it holds on to it and it's slow to come back off that heat. So if you want a pan that's more reactive in terms of the heat, you want a pan that'll heat up fast and cool down fast, you're not going to use a cast iron pan because you cannot get that responsiveness from the heat in this type of pan. So you're asking, why would you need responsiveness? Well, if you're cooking some scrambled eggs and you want to cook the eggs, turn off the heat, and put them over onto the side and continue to make some of your other dishes, you may not want the pan to hold on to all that heat because by the time you get back to those eggs, they are overcooked. You might want to saute some vegetables and you want them crisp tender and you want to be able to control that heat because if you take them too far, if the pan is holding on to too much heat, it's going to take those vegetables too far and they're not going to be crisp tender. They're going to be overcooked and mushy, right? Custards. Custards. There's times where you want to control your heat a lot faster than you would with a cast iron skillet. You might want to do a stir fry. I want to heat it up, do my stir fry, and I want to be able to get rid of that heat faster than I can with a cast iron pan. So to me, the question isn't one or the other, right? The question is a fully equipped kitchen needs to have both. If you want to make a tomato sauce, you want to make a meat sauce for your pasta. You don't want to do that in a cast iron pan because this iron reacts to acidic food. If you want to make a lemon chicken, if you want to make a chicken piccata, you don't want to do it in a cast iron pan because it's going to react with the acid. You want to use a pan that's non-reactive. This pan is non-reactive, right? So there are a lot of cast iron lovers out there and I am one of them. There are a lot of non-stick lovers out there and I am one of them. And there are a lot of stainless lovers out there and I am one of them. The key is to have all the cookware you need in your kitchen so you can do all those basic jobs. You can cook eggs and delicate foods in a nonstick pan. You can do pan searing, pan frying of chicken. You can make a pasta sauce, an acidic sauce in a stainless steel pan. You can fry your chicken in your lodge. Eric even makes like a hot dog chili in here. Or you can use a Dutch oven that's made out of cast iron because it holds that heat. Cook your chili beans in there. It's fantastic. So it's not one versus the other, right? 
So also with these, you need to be conscious of the thinness and thickness of the cookware because your stove, all stoves have different power, particularly with gas. You always hear of gas being based on BTUs. It's basically based on the energy, right? The power that you can get out of that stove. Um, and sometimes when you have a super thick pan, but you have a low BTU stove, or you have some of these electric stoves that don't have a lot of power, it's very difficult to drive that pan to get enough heat out of that pan. Um, one instance is my, my RV. The, uh, the stove in my RV is a really low BTU, and I have to use really cheap, thin pans because the cheaper and the thinner the pan is when it comes to stainless, it heats up really fast because you have metal, thin metal straight on the heat and that thin metal just gets ripping hot, right? Way too fast. And um, when, you have a, when you have a powerful stove, when you have a stove that doesn't have a lot of power, it takes longer to drive that thin pan up to heat and keep it up there. But also when you have a low powered stove, like in my RV, it can't drive thick, heavy pans. So if I go with my RV and the only cooking that I'm going to do is inside on the stove and I take this cast iron pan, I don't think the stove in my RV can even drive this cast iron pan. I'll put it on there and I'll wait a half hour before this pan will even heat up because the stove doesn't have enough power to drive one of these pans. I can't even use my, an all clad on there. It takes too long for it to heat up because there's just too much metal. I need a really thin, believe it or not, I paid like $49 for a set of cookware that I use in my RV, and those are really the only things that work in there. They're thin, they get way too hot, and when your stove doesn't have a lot of power, it can drive those thin pans, you know, a lot easier than the thick ones. The thick ones, you might as well just forget it, right? Yeah. Now the opposite of all that is when you have a thin, cheap set that's really lightweight, and you put it onto a normal stove. Yeah. The recipe might call for medium high heat. Well, guess what? You might as well just put it on 10 because yeah. you just killed your food because it gets hot too fast. Also, you can't simmer. If you got simmer, you can't you simmer because it's stove, too high. Those heavy ones simmer so much easier. They simmer. And before I really started cooking, that's what's kind of funny is. I never really thought about that. I thought the thin pans just wouldn't get hot. When you're talking about heat distribution, I was just thinking of heat, you know, so I put a thin pan on there and it get ripping hot and I think, wow, this pan is great, huh? No, that pan is bad. It just takes up the heat too fast. It's too, way too fast. It gets hot, it burns the heat and it burns your food. A really good, thick, nice, like stainless steel or cast iron, We'll take that heat, it'll be nice and even through the pan. You'll be able to manage the heat in that pan. Some really thin stock pots, you can't even, you can't even get a simmer on. All they do is boil. Even if you lower the heat down to two, you're boiling because it just, you just can't control the heat on them. You can control the heat a lot better on these nice stainless pans and these nice cast iron pans. Um, yeah, you'll be a lot happier with them. So cooks, that is the basics of cookware materials. This video was a little long, but um, I'm really passionate about learning to cook with the right pan for the right job. And there is no one pan that you could say, oh, this is going to be my everything because there's a place for nonstick there's a place for raw stainless, and there's a place for cast iron, and they all have a place in your kitchen. So cooks, I hope you enjoy this Saturday tip for this week. Get out there and cook, make something new, and enjoy yourself. If you like this video, please subscribe below, leave me a comment and a like, visit my website at amylearnstocook.com, also, come join the discussion in my Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Amy Learns to Cook. And also, you can catch me on Instagram at Cooking with Amy.
Thank you.